as I shoot it by She 
was trying to find the solution that was in my mind. Down the God of love came into my heart, open up my
content to be I thought I could build on life's sinking sand but I can't Praise God. Um, we have all the time. And by God's grace, um, we are going to have two sessions. The first session is just some words of encouragement. Do not take us much time. And the second session is question and answers. And, um, already announcing to those who are live that that segment is not going to be live stream so you can be free to join us this first portion by the grace of God maybe we want to pray again as we start this session our heavenly father we are grateful this blessed evening for this privilege you've given us to assemble in this fashion at this place as couples, as mothers, as fathers, as grandparents. We depend upon your wisdom and your knowledge to walk this path that you've given us to walk in this end time. There's a lot of traps and snares that the wicked one has put, not only for our marriages, but for our children and even our grandchildren. And we come, Lord, with humility, submitting before your great wisdom that you may be able to speak to us words of life 
and word of revelation and word in season that we can be able to combat the enemy from any direction that he may come. We really appreciate the inspiration and we believe something good is in store. May you take me and place me aside that Lord your spirit may have liberty of expression that after all is said and done our spirits will be filled up as we have just eaten. Our souls also need to eat that Lord we can not only be healthy but we have strength and energy to stand the test of time. We really thank you, Lord, and we salute your presence in our midst. May your Holy Spirit prevail. We ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Praise God. May the Lord richly bless you, beloved. Um, I just want to ask you to relax. This is a very relaxed atmosphere and uh, we want to be free by the grace of God. I'm sure everybody can see me and um, you can hear me well. If you feel like you want to be so close to me, you can still sit here as well. That is if you feel that you are far. But I'm sure everyone is comfortable where they are. By the grace of God. So I'm just going to have some few words of encouragement. Um, words of positioning. Words of alignment. As we were with your children yesterday, we had a wonderful time. And then today, by God's grace, um, we're just going to be putting emphasis on things. Maybe things that are important for us as couples. Parents, grandparents. Because sometimes when we come to couples meetings, we exclude uh, parents or grandparents. Because when we are coming, um, you know, a church is built of different people, isn't it? And we need to cater for every category. Especially during this season. So let's um, you know open our hearts as I take you through maybe a scripture and then we'll take it from there. Praise God. Now I want you to open with me Revelations chapter 1 by the grace of God. Now, um, did I bring my hard copy Bible? Can I use that one? All right. Praise God. Now, Revelations chapter 1. I'm just going to read one scripture there. Verse 14. The Bible says his head and his hairs were white like wool, white as snow. And his eyes were as a flaming fire. Now, this scripture has been interpreted by different scholars. The scripture that Brother Branham pondered about. And um, he got some interpretations. Yet he was not satisfied by the interpretation. No, when they were trying to describe the meaning of the white hair that Christ had. But God came down and He showed him the jury system. 
And then he realized that, you know, the judges of old, they would put on, you know, a wig, a white wig. And that white wig was nothing to do with their age. Their natural age. But it was an indication of wisdom, experience, and maturity. In judgment. Is that right? And then Brother Branham said Christ with hair white like wool and white as snow it is not showing that he is an old man he is the ancient of days now when you come to Daniel chapter 7 verse 9 the Bible says I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool his throne was like a fiery flame and his throne was like a fiery flame and his wheels as a burning fire. Now, this is indicating the same head we saw in 1963 and he come clothed in a cloud. That cloud was the wig that Christ was putting on. And that wig is declaring him to be the ancient of days. One with wisdom, experience, and maturity. Now, my subject will be wisdom, experience, and maturity. Is that right? Now, for a few moments, you agree with me that the men that wrote much about marriage in the New Testament was Paul. He brought it down as a mystery. And scholars again would debate about Paul's life. Because Paul is regarded as a bachelor. So some would say, this man, does it mean he was married and he divorced? How be it that he would talk details about marriage when he was not married? But we are not part of that debate. Because we know he was the first star in the right hand of God. He was an apostle and a prophet in the first age. And he carried the instruction of God for the entire generation. He's actually called the wise master builder. One that laid the foundation and all men that build must take care how they build. And this same Paul, when he would speak, I wouldn't want to say he spoke from his natural experience or his age it was the ancient of days that was clothing him the same cloud that came in our day is the one that was influencing him it gave him wisdom it gave him experience and it gave him maturity is that right? now as we move, you are going to find out that when it comes to life, when it comes to family, when it comes to marriage, the Bible speaks as thus in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Paul says, be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. 
Paulo ori ibani ya tebe da honne Bunga nedi shi tebe da kristo Now I praise you brethren That you remember me in all things And keep the ordinances as I have delivered them to you then Paul says but I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Christ is God now with these words only you begin to realize that if Christ has come in our day as we believe Revelation 10 verse 1 a mighty angel with one foot upon the land another upon the sea and if that was Christ and is the head of every man it means every family is going to be run by wisdom experience and maturity the same wisdom that is in the ancient of days that is influencing our generation can somebody say amen to that now as we move forward we begin to see the order that we have always been talking about I'm sure this diagram everybody is acquainted with it that we have God right at the top and we have the prophet of the hour Malachi 4 Elias and under that we've got a man the husband and we have the wife and the children and we have learned that this order can never go wrong as much as the prophet of our day was submissive to God and he could do nothing without, first without God first revealing it to him it means every man every husband must also be submissive to the prophet because he is the intelligence of our generation and the same applies to every wife they must be submissive to their husbands the same way the prophet submits to God the same way the husband submits to the prophet and if that order is correct we also expect the children to submit to the mother in the same manner now if this order is not kept, we are going to get a problem. Because the influence from God can only reach the children if there is no break, if there is no barrier that will block the continuity of that channel of influence because what the children become is what the mother is but before you worry about what the mother is she is a product of the husband and this man as well is also a product of the message of the hour which is the wisdom experience and maturity now we have learned down through the ages the measure of wisdom experience and maturity is never the same now Paul spoke we know in part but when that which is perfect comes that which is in part will be done away with. Now, from Ephesus up to our day, it was a building. It was a progression of the mystery of God. Which mystery was climaxed and crowned and kept in our generation. 
Now we know that we had the Nicolaitan, the Baalism, and Jezebelism. Which was from Ephesus up to Titaria. And we learned and we know that Nicolaitan means to conquer the church which is the laity. Is that right? And then we learned that a Nicolaitan spirit is in a family when the husband abuses the wife and make a, a dormant. That is the spirit of the Nicolaitan. And Baalism is when church and politics marry. This is when believers and unbelievers are caught up together. Whether in marriage or even our very children when they find themselves marrying in the world. That's Baalism. And Jezebelism in Titaria is a dominating female. Now it's no longer the man abusing the wife, it is the wife ruling the man. And these are the spirits that destroyed the seed that Christ left at Ephesus when Paul had declared the order of marriage itself. But we thank God that after this happened, we saw a reformation coming. Praise be to God. Now let me tell you something. Marriage will be perfect if you understand it from the message. If you don't understand marriage from the message you've believed, you are no different from your neighbor who doesn't believe this message. What can make a family to stand is when scriptural principles shape up our homes. Not, not, not trying to have it the opposite. You end up having a make-up or a pretentious marriage. Or a pretentious home that people can only see the smiles from the pictures that you post on status but in home there is no peace with the wife with the husband or the children but when it comes from this it is a foundation that cannot be moved. And I've determined never to preach marriage outside this message. Because this message is a story of marriage. Christ marrying us, the bride. Praise be to God. I'm sure his mic is not higher than mine, right? Now, be with me. Lutheran was now the coming out of Jezebelism. Because Titaria was when the Roman Catholic took over. And the church was ruling the world by the papacy. Like a woman that is ruling the man. The man cannot make a decision. When, when he tries to, to do something, the woman with a three-cornered stick will hit the man. <laughs> he raises his head, he's taken down. Whatever he has to do, he does it fearing what the wife would say. Now, Lutheran, was coming out of that. But it was only a measure of revelation. The, it was just justification. A separation from the world. And Wesleyans, they had a deeper understanding 
which was sanctification. And Pentecost, Pentecost, we know it was also another higher understanding, another higher wisdom, experience, and maturity. Until the bright age. Now, let me make this disclaimer. Your marriage is as mature as your revelation of God. Not how many years you've been married. Not how old you are. The nature of your marriage is measured by the revelation you have of God. Now, it comes back to the scripture I read. They thought the white hair meant old age. Brother Branham said, no. This is not age. It's wisdom, experience, and maturity. To the point that we all know as parents, that Brother Branham said, an elder in the church is measured by their what? Long standing in the word. Not the number of their years. Now, these are the things that you must understand. Because many times when homes dilapidate, it's because we've got people that feel they are too old to be cancelled. They're too old to come to the pastor's office and ask for advice. They feel they have more experience because of maybe the things they went through in life and nobody can tell them anything. Now you must know something. If I am your pastor that has been ordained to lead you, I'm not here to lead you in your financial life only or your, your religious life only. I'm here to lead your marriage. And I'm anointed to do that. As I am clothed with the same cloud that we have received in our day, I don't lead you by the book or by study, intelligence or philosophy. But it's the submission I have to this message that qualifies me. Not only as an office, as a pastoral office, but as a minister of this gospel. Now, this must be very clear. Praise be to God. There is no marriage that must not pass through checks and balances. Of the office of the pastor. Praise be to God. Now, be with me. When you see this coming, I want you to realize that the marriage is in the time of Martin Luther were less refined compared to the marriages in Wesley because of the revelation. That's why today when you get into a Lutheran home you don't expect the marriage there to be more refined than the marriage of a message believer. Because the quality of a marriage is determined by the revelation you have for God. But we spoke that we've got Lutherans in the message. Is that right? Now, when we Say we've got Lutherans in the message. It's people whose marriages have come out of the confusion of denomination. But yet, they still have the crave of denomination. That's why Lutherans can still smoke and go to church. It's something that they carry from Catholicism. So when you talk of a home like that, it is more worldly than it is word-based. 
under the influence of the Lutheran revival. There's a bit of worldly music there. There's a bit of worldly things that are watched by the kids there. There's a bit of worldly techniques that parents use in their lives. Because it's a shame for a marriage to fear to consult the pastor's office and use Google for solutions. To fail to use the office of the pastor to consult and go to a psychologist. It's a sign that you are under the wrong influence. Can somebody say amen to that? Now, when you talk about a Wesleyan home, they are sanctified. They are not worldly. But they are legalistic. Because it's sanctification. You know, Wesley, they stopped smoking, they wore long dresses, they kept their hair long. So it's a home that is run by legalism. There is no understanding. And there is no desire to make people to understand. When children are corrected, they are not corrected for reformation. They are only corrected for alignment. Just produce the picture that the world expects you to produce. Now we will go to that when we come to children. Is that right? No, that's a Wesleyan home. It's do's and don'ts. The wife is burdened because the man only tells him what to do and doesn't explain why it ought to be done. The children are told what to do, but they don't understand why they are doing what they are doing. And we produce hypocrites of children. You know, many of our children that fail, you've seen young girls that get impregnated first year at university. And you blame those girls. But the reality is the problem is not with those children. The problem is the parents. If the parents had allowed children to understand, you understand? They were not going to be trapped. When you conceal knowledge and facts, you don't make a child strong. Yes, they can be religious, but they are devoid of resisting power when they have to challenge or meet this world. But if you give and disclose facts, you make the children understand. We're, we're out of legalism. Now, Pentecost, you know, they've got the joy. Hallelujah. They're all happy. They smile. But there's no order in that home. You don't even know who's the mother or the father, who's the child. They've got gifts, but the gifts are not put in order by the word. So you, you can find your marriage in all these steps I've explained. But in the bright age, it is the cream of the crop. There is wisdom. There is experience. And there is maturity. Because a man is not leading the home by his effort. He is clothed by the cloud. The message of Malachi 4. Can somebody say Amen? Now, you, you see this summary that I've given. The order of God. And the responsibility of every individual. The job of a woman is as easy as the job of the church. Is as easy as the job of a pastor. You don't use your mind as a pastor. You use the mind of Christ. Simple. 
simple to lead you. It's difficult when I try to use my mind. But if I use the mind of God, I can run a church without problems. Because the mind of God will tell me, sometimes you don't need to be emotional. Sometimes you need to let it go even though it hurts. Sometimes you need to let Judas stay there. You see, it's, it's his mind. It's about him. So as a woman, if you're running a home, you tell the children what the husband says. So there's nothing difficult. As I study the word to know how to preach to you, a woman studies the husband to know how to lead the children. As a woman, your Bible is your husband. He's the word. You read him. All the days of your life, you are always trying to study your husband. I don't think there's any woman that knows me better than this one. My wife. She has studied me from Genesis to Revelation. Now she is even making a concordance. <laughs> that this letter, if it's called this, you can find it on page what what. Your maturity in marriage as a woman is determined by how much you know your husband. You can be 15 years in marriage, but you know little about your husband. Then it means you are immature. There's a wife and there's a mother. Can I get an amen? amen. Sisters, I said your maturity is determined by the knowledge you have about your husband. Praise be to God. Now, I'm going to run through a few points and then I'm going to let go. Now, we thank God that God has made us parents in this hour where this revelation is there. But the wisdom we have it is sufficient not only to lead our homes but to be an example to the people that don't believe what we believe. Now the devil, this is what he does. If I had time, I was going to read through and show you okay, let me read it. I think this is important. Praise God. Now, uh, Brother Branham, or rather, this is the standard to every marriage. Every one of you, you went through this. Listen to this carefully. Who will I ask for this woman to be wife of this man? The wife, the husband says, the father answers, I, I do. Now, this is how the marriage covenant goes. Here, beloved, we are gathered here together in the sight of God and the face of this company to join together this man and woman in holy matrimony. Which is commanded by Saint Paul. Imagine Saint Paul is quoted here. Yeah. And I think God made him a bachelor for a purpose. To answer that the experience that God speaks of in wisdom, experience, and maturity is not experimental knowledge. It's God. It's the mind of Christ. The ancient of days. It's not the experience of your age. It's the experience from Genesis to Revelation in a man in a space called time. Now, 
So that's the experience we are talking about. Now it's commanded by St. Paul to be honorable among all men. It is therefore not by any to be entered into unadvisably. Lightly, but reverently, discreetly, soberly, in the fear of God. And into this holy state, these two persons present come to be joined. Says, if there is anyone here that can show a just cause why they should not be lawfully joined together in this holy matrimony, do you now speak or from here after hold your peace? Araona mwe hapa ane ya bana chiti si chipara ho chori dengani ya wabili wasa funu bade kanyi wasa muna na mafuma kaati. I will require and will charge you both as you surely answer at the day of judgment when the secrets of all hearts shall be disclosed. Ditoba humbe na musi bachi to supindu na panda aduba da katulo musi mbi zupiri zambiru zuto zumburu liyo. If there is either of you that know of any impediment why you should not be lawfully joined together in this holy matrimony, do you now confess it? For be it assured unto you as that any couples that are joined otherwise than God's word doth allow their marriage is not lawful. But Julie, believing you have considered this solemn obligation you are about to assume, that you are to enter upon the same reverently discreetly soberly in the fear of God I shall propose to you the marriage covenant you witness the same as you join your right hands together now the wife is asked the man is asked will you have this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife to live together in this holy state of matrimony. You promise to love, honor, and cherish, and support in sickness and health, riches or poverty, and will forsake all others as long as you both live. Now, this covenant, this vow is not a game. It asks the world if there is anyone that contests the marriage. It asks you whether you know of a just cause why you cannot be married. And it seeks assurance that only death will do you part. Every married person must always remember that. Now, today, I want you to remember this lie and you must tell the devil each time he brings it to you. If ever you hear a voice that you married a wrong wife or a wrong husband, after you made this vow, you must know that voice is coming straight from the pits of hell. Whether your wife goes back to the world, whether your husband starts to drink, whether even if your husband starts to have concubines and sleep around, if that voice comes that you married the wrong car person, you must never entertain that. It's not from God. It's never from God. Because you cannot pass through this vow, this covenant, and then be wrong tomorrow. God hates divorce. And there is no ground under no circumstance for a man or a woman to divorce their partner. 
The only way that you can divorce is when you choose to remain single and go back to your wife or your husband the time you want a woman or a wife. Outside that, only death can separate you. Riches and poverty, health, sickness, you still honor and cherish one another. Then if ever things are not working, do you know how you work it out? How do you live a Christian life? You read your Bible every day and you pray every day. Then you can be a Christian. So if you want your marriage to work, you start your husband every day and you communicate. You study your husband and you communicate. And that is what will groom a marriage as much as it grooms a believer. Now, there are certain things that will always be there in a home. If you don't communicate, you produce a child or give birth to a child called Moods. A mood is a child that is born in a home that lacks communication. A mood is a product of feelings that have not been expressed. They have not been vented out. If the, if the, if the feelings are vented out, you cannot find moods in a home. Yeah. And if you fail to communicate, you leave room for the devil to explain on behalf of you. And you know the devil is always a liar. <laughs> His explanation about your feeling is always wrong. One day you can just go like, <sighs> And then you don't explain. You are doing that because you are just thinking, you know. To say, I, I forgot to wash my husband's shirt. You are talking to yourself. And the devil, your husband overhears that. There is no communication. So I said, that woman is using the language of which That woman is doing that because of this and you know he can explain for you satan can explain on your behalf if you deny to communicate your feeling so you need to choose as a person do i want the devil to explain for me or i want to do it for myself let not the devil do it for you can somebody say amen? Now, as we come down, the message of God, we've been preaching about contentment, right? Comfort. Those are principles that must govern our homes as well. After this marriage covenant has been made, a man and a woman must learn to be content with whoever you have married. If your wife is thin the time you marry and after a few years she becomes big, you don't start to look at the neighbor's wife. Be content with your wife. The way she is. Ah, now you are big. You are not beautiful anymore. You just buy a new cloth and she can be beautiful in a different style. <laughs> Do you know clothes can change the look of a person? Only clothes. Some people look disorderly because 
their weight has changed, but they are still using old clothes. Mm -hmm. and they look funny but if they buy new clothes nobody will say ah there is a problem they just say this is nice can I get an amen or a smile at least are we together you know I don't want to feel like I'm preaching we are talking now you see when you fail to be content the devil will give you suggestions, you know. And a wrong spirit will come in. You fall in adultery. Or anything that is contrary. Then, oh, you, you know, you, you, you start that issue of comparing now. You know, also, comparison is actually what brings discontent. Every family is enough. Every home is unique and is special in its own way. We can never be the same, come what may. We are different. The wife, the husband, must never compare themselves with the neighbors. Remember, my wife is the way she is to fit me. Your wife is the way she is to fit you. So if you desire certain things, you come out of it. Can you say amen to that? So it's not every house that can eat the same dress the same drive the same build the same so there must not be pressure in a home because of other people's achievement use your own pace keep your own lane and be content with what God has entrusted you with and you'll be happy in your home and children that are groomed under such an atmosphere they will never disappoint in the future praise God you, you, you see what we are talking about. They will never disappoint. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, are, are we together? Now, is it fine? All right. Now, we, we spoke about comparing, right? I feel, all right. I got it right. All right. God bless you. Oh, I'm communicating with a brother who is on sound, so he's tipping me what to do here. All right. Now, 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 when it comes, we're talking about children who are groomed under that. Because children, they learn from what they see. Especially from their parents. Before you blame your child, check yourself. Because a child is a product of your behavior. The way you talk, the, your child is just like that. Other parents will be beating themselves when they beat their children. Because whatever the child is, is what they put in the child. I don't know how many times you have beaten yourself. Eh? <laughs> now you never show negativity. You know? If you know the children, they study. You don't show negativity before them. You don't disagree before your children. You don't make them choose between mama and papa. You must show that you're one. Now, when my little girl, because they compete, my boy and my girl, they compete sometimes. Mike says, Daddy, I just say, Mommy. So it's like they'll be fighting. I'm for daddy, I'm for mommy. <laughs> now, now Adasa then says, I want mommy. <laughs> and then mommy says, no, I want daddy. <laughs> so if you want me, you must come through daddy. <laughs> now, now, you see the point. There are certain elements that if you don't deal with them at a tender age, you can create a home where a child feels more free to talk to the mother or the father. And when that begins to exist in a home, your children will deceive you. 
No matter how think how wise you think you are. But if the children see no difference, there is no line of separation between a mom and a dad. They just know. <laughs> we can't deceive these two. Because they are one. You, you, you get the point. Now, many things can be spoken. But I want to come back to the fact that every home must be led by wisdom, experience, and maturity from the pillar of fire, the cloud of glory that came to us in this generation. And as long as it is the pillar of fire guiding, you are never going to have any problem by the grace of God. So tonight, I want to come to a place. Praise God. As we are going to be closing for the second session. You know, there are many things I can speak, but I would rather speak them as I deal with the questions. Are the questions in the box? Maybe the, I'm sure people are writing their questions, right? Those who are able, brother, you can move with the box as they put their questions right in there. So by the grace of God, I'm sure it is clear. You, you can be a newlywed and you are asking yourself how will I lead a home as a brother? This is the way. Let Christ be your head. And you have all the necessary information for you to overcome. Now, maybe I would come to this. If there is no question, about this, I would also want to talk about single mothers, uh, single fathers, you know, there are people that are widows, and uh, others who lost their wives, you know, at times we don't take time to guide and direct, you know, such things which I feel is very important. As much as we know that a family that is not having both parents is imbalanced, but if God has allowed it to be that, it is not imbalanced. And I will show you how by the grace of God. So may the Lord richly bless you. Those who are alive, we have come to the end as we give a hand of praise. Uh, I'm seeing a couple of people here. Uh, there is uh, Jemima Baloi, uh, the sister Nechunda, the brother's wife. There is Gilbert Dubois. His brother Daniel Mate. Na Daniel, brother Daniel Mate. His brother Thierry. Na na Thierry. His uh, sister Matawa. Na Matawa. Sister Matawa, it's your husband who said we must not live stream this. <laughs> I'm sure you are hearing me. Eh? All right, and there's um, sister Kathy. Na Kathy. There's sister Doris as well, all na the way from the U.S. His brother Isaac. May the Lord richly bless you all. We trust this portion was a blessing. Now we want to go to nitty gritties. Till we meet again. Brother, you can just put a song maybe for them as they will maybe a dismissal song on live stream. Praise be to God. God bless you. How many are still happy? Praise the Lord. Brother, indicate to me if you've done that. All right.